What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 132 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Today I want to talk to you about another Spider-Man book and that is Spider-Man Dying Wish. This is 698 through 700 of The Amazing Spider-Man written by Dan Slott with art by Umberto Ramos and Richard Elson. And this is the story of Dr. Octopus who is dying. He switches his mind with Spider-Man's mind so that Dr. Octopus's mind is in Spider-Man's body and Spider-Man's mind is in Dr. Octopus's dying body. And then the rest of the story is Spider-Man in Dr. Octopus's body trying to restore everything and then we get to see how that works out for them. And uh, this is an okay story. It's really less of an actual story and more of a setup for another story. Uh, if you are watching this video now or in the future, then you know that a few years ago, Dan Slott did a new Spider-Man series called The Superior Spider-Man, which followed Dr. Octopus in Peter Parker's body, trying to be a better Spider-Man than Peter Parker. And this is all set up for that. And so it feels less like a complete story on its own, and it feels more like it's building towards a new status quo. And as such, this is three issues long, and one of the issues is double-sized. I think that this drags on way too much. The first issue here, uh, everything seems normal. We get to see Spider-Man going around doing Spider-Man-y things. Uh, he stops some bad guys from doing some stuff, and then uh, he goes about his business. It's not until the very end of that issue where we find out that Dr. Octopus has already switched minds with Peter Parker. And so throughout that entire issue, the Spider-Man that we're seeing is actually Dr. Octopus doing Spider-Man-y things. And I have an issue with that issue, no pun intended, because Dr. Octopus is not acting like Dr. Octopus at that point. He's acting like Peter Parker because everything seems normal. And then after that, in the remaining two issues of this book, suddenly he's acting like Dr. Octopus. And that's bad writing. Whenever you have characters switch bodies, but then we, the audience, don't know that that's happened, and one of the characters is acting normal, and then suddenly, once we find out, then they're acting evil, uh, that's really contrived and really sloppy, and I think that they could have done a better way of going about this story. Honestly, I think they could have just shown us how Dr. Octopus and Spider-Man switch minds and then have Dr. Octopus act like Dr. Octopus. Uh, other than that, like I said, this isn't so much of a story as it is building towards the story that Dan Slott really wants to tell. I think that this could have been two issues long if you wanted to start with the issue that we start this book with. If you want to start with telling us at the end of 698 that Peter and Dr. Octopus have switched minds, then you could have had this be a two-issue storyline and and not have one of the issues be a big double size issue. And I think part of that is that they knew that issue 700 was coming and so they wanted issue 700 to be a really big deal. So we're going to kill off Peter Parker in issue 700. And I'd rather they not do that. I don't like it when a series tries to build towards a big uh, monument sized issue like issue 50 or issue 100. I would rather them just tell the story that they're going to tell and if it happens to be that issue 698 is a big monument sized issue then that's how it goes. I'd rather them not try and work around these 100 issue landmarks uh, but uh, that's a thing that a lot of series will do. Uh, very rarely do I see a series not do that uh, but it is still a problem here. Uh, so overall uh, do I think that this is worth reading? If you really enjoyed uh, the Superior Spider-Man series then yes I think that you should read this uh, to kind of get a little bit more of the backstory of that series but uh, if you don't don't care for Dan Slott's work overall, and I know there's a lot of people who don't really like Dan Slott's Spider-Man stuff, then I would say you could pretty safely skip this. Uh, but uh, maybe you might want to check in on the Superior Spider-Man, uh, because I know a lot of people, they didn't like that, uh, but then a lot of other people uh, did like it. So maybe you could check out the Superior Spider-Man, but I would say if you are interested in the Superior Spider-Man, uh, you don't have to read this. It's not necessarily crucial to figure out what's going on. You will be guided along the way if you want to just jump right into the Superior Spider-Man series. Uh, so that's all that I have to say about Dying Wish. Uh, not much of a story, really just building up towards a new status quo and not especially well handled anyway. Uh, so those are my thoughts on this book. I hope that you liked this video and if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back tomorrow with a different video. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.